production from Berlin. I'm Miguel and this is Damien. I'm from Chile, he's from Cuba. And we do some uh, drum beats just with the drums. We played together like nine years. In our part we started to play in 2010. We play together very intensive, I think, since 2011, there we was playing every every Sunday here in Mara Park. We was playing years and years on the streets, um, but for fun and for love, because love of music. And in the end, uh, a lot of people uh, was telling us all the time, hey, you have a CD, I want to have your music for home. And like, it was, was uh, doing like a... A lot, lot of years he wasn't with any CDs and a lot of times we wasn't even collecting money because we was doing it for fun. He was jamming on the streets and uh, for us it was like something uh, uh, cleaning ourselves with the music and having fun and uh, connecting with the people and it was not about money. Most funny story about our um, about music as, as a street art was in, in the train station for me because I do DJing. A lot of times I have uh, um, playing in the, in the train station, Schlesische Tor, and if you put in music in some space, especially in a place where it's, it's not expected to have some party or some music, then the, the atmosphere is changing. And usually there at the train station there was a huge party going on and one time it was so full 
the people wasn't coming out of the train anymore and uh, then the police was coming and closing the doors and they was they were uh, looking very aggressive and we was in the middle of an electro party and in the end uh, I was uh, uh, feeling the bad vibes against the police you know there was like uh, people shouting and, and was kind of collapsing the energy and the vibe and then I was putting in one law from Bob Marley and the, the whole situation changed because it was coming some aggressive energy and then when I was putting one law then everybody was hugging each other and making peace signs and smiling everywhere and then even the police was changing the face from aggressive to to looking to each other and, and beginning to smile and after that the police was coming to me and it was a completely illegal party and the police was coming to me and uh, saying okay if, if the party stays like this in a positive way then you can continue Every day on the street corners, train stations, markets, tourist hotspots, you see people performing trying to earn a living or wanting to showcase their art. This can be found all over the globe from musicians, mimes, clowns, fire performers and artists. Some of them extremely talented, some of them extremely bizarre. This documentary is about a filmmaker called Carl. He wanted to see what it was like to live his life as a street musician. What turned out was not what he expected. Having grown up in Australia, in the small town of Perth, music was always a key interest to us. But he wanted more adventure, so he went to Berlin to make a documentary. Carly briefly lived in Berlin in 2011 and decided to make Berlin the subject of his film. Wanting to set himself a challenge, he flew to Berlin penniless, but for a guitar, to experience first-hand as a busker the duration of six months living only on the money earned on the street. I think it all started about a year ago when I was living in Australia and I decided I wanted to make a documentary about street music. I guess maybe the, and the thing I found interesting was why do people become buskers and why do you end up doing that? Like, as the musician I once was uh, 10 years ago, you see, I, I used to want to, all I wanted to be was a rock star. Like, growing up, that was my dream. Uh, and so the idea of playing on the street didn't really appeal to me because it just seemed it's something that you, you're almost begging for money, or at least that's the interpretation that comes across when you're in Australia. I mean, you walk past people that are they're generally playing some crappy songs that you've heard a million times, and it, it doesn't wow you. So I hadn't, want, I hadn't wanted to be one in the past, but then I, had some, I met some people in Australia who had been busking, but they were also a real band, and they showed me that you can actually make a bit of decent money from doing this, but I had no idea. And then it started to intrigue me. What is this world of busking and what's going on? And there have been several musicians that have made it famous throughout doing this. Like one of them had a guy called John Butler Trio, um, another guy called uh, Dub FX, you know, and these are two really, really huge artists that started on the street and now are quite famous. So there was definitely something there and it wasn't something that I had experienced before. So what not a better thing to make a movie about? But obviously, living in Australia, all these licenses and permits and areas you can play, and we don't really have a tourist hotspot. I mean, other than the Sydney Harbour Bridge and the Opera House, we don't have a tourist hotspot. And I'm not from Sydney. Whereas places like Berlin, you know, you have the Brandenburg Gate, you have the Berlin Wall, you have the Reichstag, you just have places of history. So that's what appealed to me, but not just that, the artistic culture that was going on here. And you know, you had people like Iggy Pop and David Bowie that were living in Berlin and Nick Cave. And and this was creating this like underground art scene. So uh, I think what not better place to have it than Berlin, where even though it is Germany and Germany is, is known for having such strict laws on things, like 
Berlin is one of those places that is actually quite different. People just bring their art to the streets here. So for me, that's why I picked Berlin and why I started doing this movie. Um, and now it begins, how did it all happen? Other than I knew I wanted to make it here. Um, I knew I had set myself these rules. You can only busk. You can earn, um, that's the only way you can earn money. And you have to do this every day for six months, starting from the summer all the way to the winter. And when I came here, I only had like 30 euro in my pocket. So it, it was going to be hard. And, and from day one, I had problems. But so I just kind of, I booked my flight over here and and that was it. You know, I didn't ask to stay with anybody. I, I didn't have anything prepared. I didn't have anyone helping me. I had no camera crew. You know, I just, I just packed my camera, my guitar, and basically arrived. And from day one, I had to start busking. Carl headed out on his first day of busking, eager to find out if the experience would go as planned. Only now did it settle in how this might not be quite as easy as it had originally seemed. Alright, it's my first day busking today and I've borrowed an acoustic guitar from my friend because I don't have an amplifier. So I'm going to see how it goes, but I only know a handful of songs. So, uh, yeah, this is the start of my six month adventure. Well, I already had problems from the first day. When I actually flown into Frankfurt, and from there I had organized a train into Berlin, but I actually missed my train, and then I had to spend uh, almost all the money I had on a new bus back to Berlin. And then the first day I actually got there, I caught up with my old roommate, Max, and we hadn't seen each other since 2011. Max was Carl's own roommate, but no stranger to the world of music. At the age of 17 in 2007, he stumbled into the German equivalent of American Idol, only to find it was not for him, and he quit as one of the last three, which caused for an uproar in the German media world. He released a record, Confessions, with his band Empty Trash, collaborated with artists such as Eric Burden, sang live with Bob Geldof, Bono, Loop Fiasco, and performed on Amnesty International's 50th anniversary song alongside Chris Christopherson, Ewan McGregor, Lee Bonhelm and many more. Also providing vocals on a track with Ringo Starr for Klaus Foreman's Grammy nominated record A Sideman's Journey. Despite the struggle for credibility because of the TV show, he released his first solo record, Sidewalk Conversation, in 2012. Since then he's been playing streets, support shows, bars, stadiums, wherever he can, as long as it means he's been able to play. So a year and a half after Carl left uh, um, Berlin, he rang me up and told me he's back in town, and um, we met at 8 million meter, my favorite bar, and uh, he started telling me about his documentary. And uh, we were kind of bored, there was nothing happening at 8 million meter, so we decided to go on a pub crawl. We got so wasted that after Carl telling me, oh, I have this amazing camera and I'm doing this documentary, you know, um, he, he lost his camera, drunk as he was, and, uh, and I lost my phone. It's my third day. I lost my camera. I lost my camera on the first day. I'm a f fucking idiot. 
I went out to last night to find it. Nine. Uh, shit. I ended up selling my MacBook Pro just to get a new camera to, to film this. Which was um, pretty stupid for him because that set him back uh, a couple of hundred of euros. And uh, I guess that kind of made him start busking uh, seriously. I went out to go busking on, on my second day and then I didn't make any money. So, you know, things were tough. Because yeah. he had to make, make up, you know, for the money. He had to get a new camera because without the camera his whole project, his whole thing uh, wouldn't work. While failing to succeed in the first week, Carl knew he needed to find out how to become a successful busker. So he went down to Mauer Park to meet Alice, a South African street performer, to find out what her first experience playing on the street was like. I don't know what to play anymore. I've played all my prettiest songs. Um, I'm going to play a song that I played right in the beginning. Um, so sorry, because you've been sitting here the whole time. You're going to have to hear... You can go like this the whole time, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, um, I'm, yeah, my name's Alice, I'm from Cape Town, I've got some CDs, um, they're 10 euros, and um, thanks for the, the support. I think this will be my last song. I'm going to take a break and eat some food, and, and then I'm going to play somewhere else. So, um, yeah, I really appreciate it. Um, the song is called The Acrobat. Um, my name's Alice Phoebe Lou. I've been playing in Berlin for four months this year. Um, but when I arrived, when I was traveling, I was traveling around last year for like eight months and I was actually making money from doing fire performance. You are the crazy acrobat. When I came to Berlin, that wasn't working very well. Like, no, like people would be like, oh, cool, fire, but they wouldn't actually give me money. So, um, so then I was like, yeah, hey, I got a guitar, I play a few songs. experience I was so broke that I couldn't afford food like literally I was so I'd been traveling for six months on like what like a thousand euros on six in six months that's all the money I had my first time busking was in San Francisco and I did it on Haight Ashbury I made a buck and I got some pennies some dimes you know so the first time I played is uh, 2001 that's 12 years ago uh, I was studying in a town in Denmark, Aarhus. So my very first time busking was, uh, I was very new, I'm still very new at the guitar, I mostly sing, and uh, I needed practice and my neighbours were getting pissed off with me, practicing, um, you know, in the house. I eventually, like, I had no fucking money and um, the fire dancing wasn't working and me and my friend were getting a little bit, like, dodgy, we were like, fuck, where are we going to stay, what are we going to do? And she was like, just play on the street. And I was like, oh, fine, you know, because the thing is, I wasn't sh shy doing the fire, but when it came to playing music on the street, I, it was a whole different thing. And then uh, a man spit in my case. Uh, uh, it was the first time I ever tried it. I just bought my guitar, given it a shot, you know. And, uh, and the school had to go on a field trip kind of thing for the weekend. And we had to raise like 50 euros to get on the, on the trip. And I did not have 50 euros, and I had asked everybody in the school if they could lend me the money, and uh, they could not. And then uh, this gal, she told me to go into the street. So I went to Hakisha Markt, which is like a very touristic, restauranty kind of area, and I went to this, like the exit of the subway, and I sat on the ground, and I literally played like this the whole time, but I somehow managed to make 10 euros. So I just took it down to a park, I just took my guitar, and popped out the guitar case in front of me and just played for myself, really. First time I played, I got, I loved it, I got, uh, I played for maybe three hours. And I went out and I sang and I made the money. And it went uh, quite well, uh, so I started busking every day since then. And because like that gives, gives you some kind of confidence, so um, from there you start 
raising your eyes a bit and looking at people. And that's when you actually make more money because once you make that human connection with people, people want to help you more, you know. And I remember uh, taking a piece of paper and writing down my repertoire, which uh, consisted of nine songs. And Come Together was one of them. And I believe I sang Billie Jean in a key way too high for me. In the first 15 minutes I made 5 euros and then a girl sat down next to me and she had a joint with me and then <laughs> I played for like, yeah, like 3 and a half hours after that and I didn't make any money but <laughs> I had a great time. I mean at the moment like I'm getting some opportunities with, um, with bigger kind of things in music but I'm, try I'm keeping the standpoint that I will carry on doing street music and whether I'm you know, like more famous or if people know me more or whatever, I, I would do street tours rather than regular tours and like just publicize where I'm going and play on street corners in, in different cities. Because my passion isn't just music at this stage, it's it's street music. And it because it's like this feeling of like, not just playing for a crowd of people who have come there to see you, you're playing for random people who are in between picking up their kids from school, going here and in between their rushed lives, they just stop and they have this moment where you give them something and and that's really special for me. I've been told Mallow Park was this really interesting place to go do it at because um, they have the whole history of the Berlin Wall there. I mean the reason why it's called Mallow Park is because Mallow means wall. And, and, and the wall used to run through there, and now they have a big market there every Sunday, an open-air karaoke event which attracts thousands of people. And while I was there, I bumped into a guy named Temple Hayes, who is this American kid, and he told me his whole story as to how he got started busking. All right. All right, all right, all right. Well, I've been in Berlin for about eight months and busking pretty much the whole time. <laughs> May 1st for May Day, and we had all these punks come on, and people were giving us beer, and it was just, we went all night, we had six amps, and we just set them all up, and man, we had four vocals, a bunch of guitars, it was, it was fucking great. <laughs> Busking is just kind of a way to get by, you know. I'm a musician, you look at the jobs around here, I mean, you work as a dishwasher or something, you get five euros an hour, and they want you to work at night, these kind of things. But if you busk every night, you can make 35, 40 euros minimum. It's all on the street, people. I don't think they respect for that. They pay. they pay you and say, hey, it was great, you know, thanks for being here. Now we play on the street, man. We play everywhere, we just want to play music. and Temple A's, and we're working with the Tone Vision Studios and Fronau and putting out an EP and it starts on the street and then you bring it out there and then we're going to festivals. Ah, well when you play on the street there's, uh, there's none of this disconnection that you can get on the stage between audience and the artist. As in the artist is there with the people and they just put their soul out there for the people. It's for free, it's a donation, it's as in you come, you get what you want, and we play for you, we play all day, we play because we live to play. But I mean, when you're on a stage, you can make a really big show, an amazing show, and you can really impress people. When you're on the street, you don't have these fancy lights, you don't have these big amplifiers, you just have a room with the radio, 
shitty mic, and you put your soul out there, and you, it's ten times harder playing it actually than playing it out of tune. Well, after speaking to a few buskers, you know, they all told me they kind of had different acts. Some of them had gimmicks or whatever, or what was their, like, strength point in, in attracting people. So I, I tried to look at it in, in a different light of view. I mean, I wasn't a very good musician, but I, I'm sure I could find a way to entertain people. I mean, you have all different sorts of buskers. Some are singer-songwriters, some are jugglers, some are the, the human statues that paint themselves all gold and silver. And so I thought, what's a way I can kind of stop people on the street? And I happened to have one of those novelty horse head masks that I had brought with me. I thought, oh, I might be funny to take some photos with while I'm in Berlin. So I decided to put that on one day. And um, actually noticed a lot of people started paying a lot more attention to me. Obviously, my music wasn't that good, but they're like, oh, it's a guy in like a horse mask. And, you know, it's kind of funny. Um, and it was at the end of June which I'd arrived and it was it was a really hot day it was about 27 degrees and um, I was absolutely sweating with this false mask on um, and I'd only been playing for half an hour but I'd made about six euros and I was like wow okay six euros compared to like the one euro I made without it that's quite a difference um, but I'm like I can't do this much longer with you know being so hot so I decided to take off my shirt and then play um, and I noticed people started paying a lot more attention to me. They're like, oh, that's that shirtless guy in, in, a, in a horse mask. Um, and I thought, fuck it, I'll, I'll just take my pants off as well. And that day, I think I made 30 euro, and that was like the best day I'd ever had for me. Like to go out busking and make 30 euro when, you know, other people are just making a handful of money working at McDonald's. Um, I thought that was really great. So, um, I, I went and caught up with a friend, had a beer and said, hey, today I went out and I, I put this horse mask on and, and I took off my shirt and my pants and I, I made all this money. And he's like, wow, maybe that could be your thing. And I was like, yeah. Um, so like, I, I need a name, maybe I need to create myself a Facebook page. So we rattled it through ideas around it and came up with the naked horse. Except, nay, is like, nay, the, the sound a horse makes. Um, so naked, and uh, I guess that's how it all got started. So 
even after doing pretty well the first few weeks, playing as this whole naked horse character, I was still a long way behind because I had lost my camera the first day and I had to come up with a way to continue filming this movie. And what I found out from talking to these other buskers was that you have to do more than just play. I mean, if you want to make that extra money, you need something to sell. And some musicians have uh, merchandise, like whether it be CDs or little badges or even T-shirts. So I had to figure out a way to kind of get, get some extra money. I mean, I was, I was just scraping by, but I was, I, you know, I was going out there every day and doing this. And if it was raining, you know, I, I couldn't play. Um, and then one day I got a message from someone on the, my Naked Horse Facebook page. And it was a lady from Canada saying that her son had actually seen me playing. And, and I thought it was really funny. Um, and he was with his sister, like showing her around Berlin because he had just moved to Berlin and she was there on holiday. So um, the, the sister had then told her mum how like he thought this was the funniest thing I'd ever seen. And then the mum contacted me and said, would you play a surprise birthday for him? And, I, and at first I thought, well, you know, do, do people actually find this funny? Like, it's, it's kind of strange, but like I could, I could see how that would be a funny present. So I said, tell me a bit about yourself. I explained that this was for a documentary. Um, but then they said, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll pay you. And, and I thought, well, you know, I'm behind on my rent and this is, I guess this is what other buskers do. You need to find like other opportunities to earn money. Whether, whether it be selling a CD or playing a private show. I mean, other buskers are also doing bar gigs, so I thought, hey, why not? So um, we organized it all, and um, his friends had told me like where they were going to be celebrating their birthday. So um, I'd, I'd arranged to learn how to play Happy Birthday on guitar, and um, I, was, I was actually learning it on the way on the train ride there. I mean, I only had a few days to organize it. So, yeah, I kind of left it to last minute, but we, we went there and everything went off as a hitch. I mean, everything went off great. Um, you know, I, I kind of hid across the road until, until he went inside, and then, and then I, I kind of came over, and, he, and I think he's looking at me going, who's that horse guy? Like, I, I've seen him before, and then I come over and I start playing him happy birthday. was it wasn't it wasn't all going to be good and it wasn't all going to be easy um, I talked to some other buskers about bad experiences they have had and we all you know shared to see some share some common themes my worst experience you know I've never really had a bad experience um, some guy pissed on me once <laughs> You spend an hour packing up all of your shit, all of your instruments, all of the amplifiers. But there's some spots where the music I make is much more quiet and... Setting everything up, getting ready for this big day to hopefully be able to earn enough to make 
Yeah, it's slow and sort of old school bluesy, so fast paced areas don't work. Like uh, there's some areas where you get a lot of people walking past all the time, uh, but they don't stop if you've got quiet and soulful music. Starting your first song and having a polizai, a, a, a policeman coming up to you and saying, you can't do this here. One of the times that I had had was I was playing at Warschaustrasse, one of the most popular train stations in Berlin, because there's a lot of foot traffic to where all the nightclubs go. And I really needed some money uh, that month to pay my rent, um, so I went out at night to go busking. And so I set up everything, I started playing, I think I'd only been playing for about 20 minutes. Um, before some guy rips off my horse mask and runs away down the street with it. And I'm just standing there with my pants at my ankles and, and nothing to do other than being like, come on, someone chase after that guy. And I never got my mask back. Um, so I, I had to go buy another one. Um, but there'd been a really few close calls where um, my rent you know, it had come to the end of the month and my rent was due and I had enough money for my, my rent but I didn't have to make any more, I didn't have enough money for anything else. And then something would go wrong, like my amplifier broke. Three days before my rent was due and I was like, shit, what am I gonna do? Like, I can pay my rent but then I'll have no money to buy a new amplifier and I'll be stuck or I can use my rent money to buy an amplifier but then I've got three days to come up with a whole new amount of rent money. But so I had really, I had no other choice, so I used my rent money to buy a new amplifier and I made the money. You three know, days. In three days, I just went out and I played until I, you know, I just played and played and played and I made the money. So it just goes to show like, if you need to do it, you can. I, even one day I remember it was raining but I was like, no, I need to make this money. And I remember, I, I remember as it started raining, uh, I turned on the distortion and I started playing Thunderstruck. Thunder. And the people that walked past me, you know, started pulling their um, umbrellas out and they're like, Thunderstruck, you know, and, and I only maybe had nine people walk past in, in those 10 minutes, but I made about 15 euro because everyone's just like, this guy's got guts. You know, I'm playing there in, in the rain with my pants off and a horse must go on, just, just ripping out the solo. Moments like that, sometimes you think, oh no, like it's about to rain, I have to pack and leave. But sometimes you're just like, fuck it, I'm, I'm just gonna do it. I mean, you've got to take the good with the bad. I mean, it's not all gonna be easy. Um, and you know, sometimes, like after this guy took my horse mask, and I was like, I really wanted to like kick it in. I, and, and after my amp broke, I was like, fuck this, you know, uh, am I really gonna be doing this for six months? But moments when you have people write you messages and say like, that's really inspirational, you made my day, you know, that really inspires you to keep going. And it's, it's worth every penny when you see someone like with a smile on their face and you know. So for me, that's what kept me going. Moments like when uh, Tyler had his birthday and, and for when people ask me to do private shows or just for when people coming up and you know, and, and taking a nice photo with me and walking away with a smile. And for me, that, that makes everything worth it. Carl went to the streets undercover.
to find out what the public actually thought of his act. He was surprised to find out what a cult impact he had started to make in Berlin. Sing the fucking great Orsin singer. I love this man! Yeah, he's completely crazy. Well, I think it's interesting, it's different. Like, it draws attention. It's a great idea. He's punk. He's great. He makes me laugh. No, no, Yeah, he's really great. We like him at first sight. At least me, I like him. He's really great! Uh, fucking happy hour. Uh, uh, I, I like horse, I like uh, man, I like uh, guitar, so I like, like uh, a rolling horse. I think he's a very good performer, the music is good, but I want to see his face. I think he's pretty fucking awesome, like, uh, wild, crazy. I think it's really funny, it's not something that you see every time. Uh, I think he's uh, crazy, but he's a good guy. Make a word is crazy. Awesome. It's cool, but he uh, needs uh, some practice. I think he looks perfect, like just barely the way of living. He represents the city very well. This is a song I wrote about uh, television. It's about television. It's called TV Told Me. I was thinking about television told me, but that's too long. Hi there, my name is uh, Frederik Konradsen or Freddy. I'm from Denmark and uh, here we go. the heart of Europe because I like to go on road trips and I can, you know, you're one step closer to like say Paris or Madrid or Barcelona or take a trip to Italy or whenever I visit a festival, I'm closer to my location. So it's a great location, it's a beautiful city and uh, it's still cheap, it's like one of those, uh, it's the last gym of Western Europe. People here are really friendly and, and we got people from all over the world. So I, you know, I always had a dream of seeing the whole world and I just feel so incredibly blessed that I can take my music and take it with me and, and it's just a great way of meeting the people. Now I know what's really hip. I do this definitely for the love and, uh, and it's a good thing. I feel blessed that I also am able to make money to be what I love doing. I don't like money and I don't like um, what money makes you do, like getting a real job and working 9 to 5 and doing shit you hate so that you can carry on doing shit you hate. It's, it's a, you know, we, we, this, this is our work, it's what we do. Not, don't, don't, don't go to the office, go here and work for it. So It's tricky because I don't have any money and um, I can't seem to get a job, have a job here. The way that I make money now, it's like I realize I'm realistic and I realize I need money to survive and to have a good time. Because if I play on the street, people seem to appreciate it a lot and throw money at me, as opposed to working my ass off in a job where uh, you don't get any appreciation. So it just seems to be more rewarding. Because I like having a good time. I like treating myself, I like eating good food, I like going out partying, I like having some pot to smoke every now and then, you know? So I realize that I need to make money, so the fact that I can actually do what I love on my own terms, without a boss, on my own hours, with my own ideals and my own fun, and I can, and it's fun actually to do this. So I'm basically making money from, from what I love. Occasional uh, hecklers like, uh, like, like you know, people just walking by and kind of shaking me, saying stuff like, uh, uh, get a real job. And, and you know, here's my answer to that. You know, I, I, I tried that, I failed miserably, and, uh, and I just felt in general miserable. So uh, that's why I do what I do now, and it, uh, it makes me happy. And, and to the people who walk by and say stuff like, get a real job, I just hope they, they are happy doing what they're doing. I'm gonna go play at Mallow Park and I'm gonna go make like 100 euro <laughs> and then I'm gonna go to Budapest with that 100 euro. It's pretty cocky. It's pretty cocky. Well, you know, the, the naked horse today is gonna, it's gonna take things to a new level.
<laughs> without the sixth string. Uh, without a sixth. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? You might be lucky, and we might find some strings at the mile park. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I reckon. I reckon definitely. Even maybe in the markets. No, not the markets. Another busker. So, I'll do that. Yeah. Hey man, give me some love. That's actually the first time I fisted a horse. My grandfather, his name was uh something ah uh, fuck it. <laughs> When I started this movie, I'd, all I wanted to do was document what it was like to be a busker. And then through this whole experience of not knowing how to play and then becoming the naked horse, I didn't really know where it was going to take me, but it ended up blowing way out of proportion. So I think after about three months of playing, I started to meet people and when they asked me what I did, I said, oh, I was on that that guy that dressed up in horse masks, they say, I know you, such and such, they take out their phone, they say, here's a photo of you. And like, I ended up doing interviews, being on TV, being in news magazines, and and then people even addressing me on the street. And I would say, how, how do you know who I was? And they said, I recognize you from you know, the shoes you were wearing or the tattoo on your arm. And I was like, wow, this is crazy. Now my Facebook has over a thousand followers. So it's, it's had an impact. I mean, a, a lot of people are like, wow, that's this horse thing. It, it's so weird. It's so, you know, dust is so Berlin. And I, I like that I can be a part of it and be another little strange thing about Berlin. I definitely didn't expect this, but it's, it's been a lot of fun. Um, some days I'm thinking, what, why am I doing this? But, you know, overall, I had a great time and no one knew who I was. Max, my old roommate, um, had said that we should try busking. Uh, I think he was inspired by the movie I was making. And I said, hey, come on, you know, like, sure you've been on TV and sure you're playing big stages, but why don't, why don't you give busking a try? So he was, he was good enough and actually, like, took it on. Well, I've been longing to travel for for a long time, and uh, I'm a musician, so I I thought you know being a musician I travel a lot and do a lot of holidays and whatever and play everywhere. But I was uh, at a moment where I was pretty much stuck in Berlin, stuck in Germany, and I couldn't get out because I was too afraid to like I don't know be away from an opportunity. So uh, I didn't have any money and I didn't have any time really. And then I just said, fuck it, I want to I wanna do something, I want to go bus. And, I mean, as myself, like, as I said, when I was younger, I thought street musicians, you know, were just kind of like bums. So for him to do that was, was really cool, but uh, he was really excited about this idea. And he said, let's go to Budapest. Uh, well, basically, you know, the whole idea was we just leave all the money uh, leave all our credit cards and whatever and just, just try and live off the money we get from busking. So, um, and we set ourselves a, 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 a date when we wanted to be in Budapest. So we chose uh, Budapest as our destination, but um, to get there we were going to make a few stops. So we knew, we kind of figured we'd probably stop from Berlin to Dresden, Dresden to Prague, and then from Prague to Budapest. So I got a, I got a tent, uh, just in case we don't make enough money for a hostel or find people that will let us sleep there. And, um, and we went to the most southern bit of Berlin that goes in the direction of Prague, just because Prague was our first stop. We actually managed to go kind of lucky. Um, at, we had only waited for an hour and a half for the first period, and then uh, the second lift from Dresden to Prague, we'd had a tour bus that had just 
um, dropped off the band and was heading back to Prague. And, and, and me and Max had our guitars and our amps, and so when they pulled over, we were just like, oh, tour bus, perfect, this is amazing. So we got this beautiful ride on this tour bus, and uh, he drove us straight to Prague. And from then on, we just went down, looked a bit around, you know, where, where could we play? Where, and um, it was tough finding a spot because, you know, you don't want to stand there and play and, um, and know you are annoying shop owners or whatever. So we found a really cool spot, I think. By the time we got there, it was about 10 o'clock at night, and all we'd organised was that there was a couch surfing meeting at some bar, and we thought well, maybe we can go there, we can either stay out the whole night, or maybe we can find someone from this couch surfing meeting to crash at. Oh, we, we went on couch surfing or whatever, you know, and Carl knows this from couch surfing before. I, I didn't know the website, and, and, uh, and supposedly you could, you know, there's like people, they say like, oh, we're couch surfing here too. Uh, we're meeting at this bar and having some fun there. And then, um, we actually at the meeting we ended up meeting this really nice uh, French guy called Zach that was living um, there. And so we went to his house, dropped off all our stuff, and then we we're going to go out on a big night out in Prague to celebrate. So we decided to go out and party at a club or something and then um, <laughs> uh, we, we dropped off our stuff at his place at the, at the art gallery thing and uh, <laughs> we went out to party um, and uh, we were pretty drunk and at half past one or something, I don't know, we went, we went down to catch a train and I had this brilliant idea of sliding down some stairs and uh, yeah, that was pretty much a dumb idea. Falling on the ground? Man, what the fuck, man? So what does he do? Well, my fucking because he had a really a lot of trouble with his insurance. So he, uh, he, he it takes hurt, one year and a half to make them replaced. So he learned to speak uh, stupid, huh? without... Uh, that was really stupid. <laughs> it was really funny, but it was really stupid. Uh, you know, I couldn't you... say you, did, you don't deserve it. No, I fucking deserve it. <laughs> fuck this. Yeah, but I had to do it because, yeah, whatever. But uh, yeah, I lost my teeth, uh, half of my teeth. Hmm. Um, we ended up having to go back uh, to Germany to so he could go to the dentist uh, and the hospital to get his teeth fixed straight away. <laughs> I don't even know where to begin with this stuff because this whole fucking tr uh, trip was was fucking weird as shit because this this. This English dude, I mean, how, where to begin? This guy, he was, a, he was a medic in the English army. He served in Afghanistan, Iraq, and all that. And, <laughs> and uh, as it so happened, he bought a house in Germany at the border of Prague. I stayed in Prague and made my way to Budapest while he was in Germany. And then we decided to meet up in Budapest. Um, and there we played, and, you know, it was great. We, we made actually quite a lot of money. I think I made 40 euro in an hour. Busking there was way better. We had enough money to like uh, get ourselves a hostel every day. So we went out, busked, went to the hostel, gave them the money, and went busking. But, uh, <laughs> you know, 
Bohe in the bohemians that we are, we, we spent all of the money that we made on one day that night. So we'd always have to start from scratch again. So, you know, it, it had turned out to be a pretty successful trip apart from the problems that we had along the way. And I, I, then it showed me that I guess I can really do this anywhere I go. It's a pretty fucking rad experience that we had. Yeah. While playing at Mauer Park, Carl had met several other street musicians. One of these groups called Charity Children originally formed as a duo from New Zealand. Chloe and Elliot originally came to Berlin to pursue acting careers, but had ended up playing on the street to make ends meet when this plan had not worked out as well as they originally hoped. safety of our own bedroom, like we never played in front of people, we were way too shy to do that. Yeah, we got here, we saw our money dwindling. And and we realised that we, well, we... We hadn't made any plan of what to do in Berlin. Like, we knew that it was the city, we knew Berlin was the city that we wanted to live in, but we didn't know we kind we of, were we'd, going to do here. We'd just sort of like fallen in love and moved over together and we got here and then we sort of realised that have anything to do so we yeah we went down to the streets one night and we just um well, we didn't really even have very many songs of our own at that time like just a couple so we were just sort of playing covers and we just went down to this street corner or outside like some takeaway place on Herman's driver and just played for a few hours and like we were just amazed at the response that we got we didn't think that anyone would stop or anyone would notice but um but the people that did were like really nice and um, we made 12 euros and a couple of apples and, and we were really, we were really happy with that after a couple of hours. months later when we used to have people after a couple of months we got really sick of playing covers as people usually do so we just would spend all of our evenings sitting in this apartment that we got and just just writing music and we'd go out and try these new songs on the street and after a while people would come up to us um, after we were playing on the street and they'd come up and say oh, you know we really like your sound what what's what's your band called and this question used to make us laugh. I mean, we were like, what, you know, what do you mean a band? They're just playing, you know, little songs on the side, side of the road. And like, how do we find you again? And we thought, well, I guess, you know, I mean, what is a band but a, you know, a group of people that play music? So I guess we're a band. So um, we came up with the name Charity Children, um, which is a, um, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a line from, or well, it's part of a line from a, a, a book by Oscar Wilde, a children's story called The Happy Prince. Um, and the charity children in that story are a bunch of dreamers. And I thought, well, we thought that, you know, like, 
we, I guess, you know, we lived on the kindness of others, basically. We were, you know, dreaming, living on the kindness of others, so we were sort of charity children. And that's how the name um, originated, and that's when we started the band, I guess. Yeah, I can, I can tell this story. This is... Yeah. <laughs> This is a, um, probably when we first got here in 2011, in the summer of 2011, we played every single day on the street, pretty much, besides, unless it was raining. And um, we were playing in Hackershire Mart once, and we got kicked out of there by the polizei, but before they kicked us out, one of the restaurants around the place gave us a a job to play there that night, basically. And we went and played there, and we made a little bit of money, but it was a really horrible thing to do. All they wanted us to do, the only question was, can you play Beatles covers? And we said, we don't know any Beatles covers, I'm so sorry, and they're like, Eagles covers? Do you know Hotel California? We're like, I don't know, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, and they're like, well, we do your own music, and we did, and we ended up getting fired because, I don't know, we were a little bit too loud and, you know, um, maybe a little bit too drunk, I don't know. But we went down, we, we finished that gig and we were like, God, we just have to, we have to get out and we have to go back play on the street this night. So we went down to Alexander Plaza and we played and a guy walked up to us after our first set and he said, he just said, I know it's, you know, I know it's really tough starting out and he shook my hand and it was one of those handshakes where he's this obviously some money in there and I was like oh wow you know five or ten euros this is great and it ended up being he gave us 50 euros I think and and he said he said um this is for following your dreams because I never did gone to Mower Park one more time in hope of talking to a few more buskers. While he was there he met Hera, a nice Australian girl. And a band called Rupert's Kitchen who had been frequenting Mower Park for several years. Well the band uh, itself started long ago, uh, but in this constellation we play at like six years, seven, seven years. Also on venues, yeah. Yeah. Also venues or private uh, parties or whatever. Uh, venues or on the street? Yeah. 
it's different. It's it's a different. It's both both nice, but uh, when we play well, uh, when uh, we have a keyboard, uh, uh -huh. so it's different. Um, so it's a different sound. It's more club sound. Um, with the Fender Rhodes, and he's playing Fender Rhodes, uh, and on, on the street it's more rough, and it's hard, good school. this street musician, this busker, um, and I, I'd seen him playing around a lot of, a lot of places. Um, I, w I tried to get an interview with him before, but, um, you know, we didn't manage to have the time or it wasn't right. And so the only interview I got to do with this guy was a little interesting. When it becomes winter, busking becomes something different. 
And when I was interviewing S Stefan, I, I, I think uh, this interview really brings out the winter side of busking. This next clip I couldn't edit, just because there is no other way to explain this as to what you see. It was nearing the end of the six months and Carl had gone to Alexander Palace to catch up with Stephen Prescott, a veteran busker who had been playing on the streets of Berlin for the last eight years. Are you doing Alice? Fucking cold. <laughs> How many say this is yourself tonight? So tonight we've already had one problem, the broken strings. Okay, I'll see how many other problems I can with. How long do you expect to play tonight? Uh, 45 minutes tops, it's freezing. Out on a normal day? <laughs> Maybe 45 minutes tops, I'm lazy. <laughs> So I, I don't know, when I, mean, I came to, to Paris, I didn't have any money and I had a guitar, so I just started doing that, and then I came here kind of the same way. chase them down and start screaming at them and so everyone who was watching would leave. Afterwards I heard her talking on the phone complaining about how she'd only made nine euros in two hours. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Busking is something that has become a part of my life. Like, I had, in, I, my initial intention was to actually do this film for three months and then after losing my camera and having all the back problems, I extended it to six months, and now it's been a year, and I'm still busking. Um, I think it's something I'll, I'll continue to do for the rest of my life. I mean, it might not be a full-time thing, like it is now, but if, if I can travel around the world with a guitar, you know, if I can just be sitting at a train station waiting for my next train, and I can whip out, put my case out, and earn some money for doing something I love, that's amazing. The reason I chose these particular musicians to film was they all had something unique and they, all, and they were all from somewhere different and um, these were people that had dedicated their lives to music you know they weren't just doing it as a hobby this was their life busking is a way of life you know and I'm, I'm really glad I had the opportunity to find that out and it's definitely yeah it's definitely something I'm going to continue Six months had now passed and the experiment for the documentary was over. 
It was Carl's final night in Berlin and he'd gone to a concert of Alice's. He was also leaving Berlin for the winter. The experiment was a success and Carl had established himself in Berlin as the naked horse. Carl had made many friends, grown as a musician, found out that busking was a vast community of diverse artists, each with a unique view on life, music and ideologies. The experience had affected Carl profoundly, to such an extent that he is now keen to explore more of what the fringes of life has to offer. Where will his next challenge take him? I don't know how much you know about me, but I've been here for six months um, playing on the street and living out my, my dreams, I guess, and um, it's all kind of led to this, so that's why this is a very important concert for me, because it's like, it's like the, the final thing, <laughs> I guess, I don't know, and it's so nice that you can be here to share it with me, I really appreciate it, and it's such a beautiful crowd, I looked around and it's just like, so many different people, some of you I don't know, some of you I met on the street along the way, you know, and it's just so nice that I could bring you all together. So um, thank you. And um, yeah, I'm going to play some more songs for you. <laughs> this one's called Grey and it's very sad. Um,